So I've heard it said that Hawaii just doesn't work for everyone these days, that in its current state, Hawaii is kind of broken. Maybe it used to work for more local people in the past, but now, does it kind of feel like Hawaii is just a place for the rich and well-connected, where locals have to make a choice, stay in Hawaii and struggle, or pack it up and go to the mainland? I see the online comments on social media where people point out everything wrong with Hawaii, often blaming the government, the unions, foreign investors, and those rich mainland people. Very rarely are any solutions discussed, though we shouldn't expect solutions in a limited and anonymous online forum. However, I think in this online space of video, such opinions and solutions can be expressed. And so I'd like to offer three ways we can start making Hawaii a better place for more people by thinking differently about housing, education, education, and the economy. Although this video is probably going to be pretty long, I hope that you can see that I put some time and thought into these ideas. And hey, it's half as long as Governor Ige's State of the State speech. And please let me know what you think in the comments below. And no, I'm not running for office, but if any elected officials think these ideas could work and would like to discuss it further, feel free to reach out. Housing, or lack of housing is clearly the biggest issue in Hawaii. According to a community poll I posted, housing is the most pressing issue in Hawaii in 2022 by a significant margin. Housing costs are the largest expense most households have, and the average median housing price on Oahu is over $1 million. In the past, the state has tried to allow for limited development, mostly in downtown Honolulu, resulting in those luxury condos you see in the Kaka'ako area. While it's great that more housing units are being built, providing construction jobs for locals, we have to ask ourselves, have those projects really had a significant impact on the housing issue here? Eh. So instead of focusing on building out the urban core in downtown Honolulu, why not think differently and look elsewhere in perhaps an area that doesn't even exist yet? Chugga 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 choo choo! Okay, the rail won't actually make that sound, but I propose using one of the most polarizing and political projects in the history of Hawaii as the backdrop for what could revitalize the housing stock on Oahu. If you aren't familiar with the Honolulu Rail Project, we're building a rail system from West Oahu to the downtown Honolulu Almoana area. And with costs soaring above the projected budget and high turnover within the agency leading the effort, the rail will be one of those things that we look back on and wonder what happened. And no matter how you feel about the project and notwithstanding the sunk cost fallacy, rail is gonna be built and it's gonna be a part of Oahu's future for generations to come. So I propose we use the rail as the skeleton to build Oahu's much needed housing where the rail stations themselves could serve as the hubs for housing for locals. I believe the term is transit-oriented development, and so in these TOD zones, allow developers to build affordable units only. Believe it or not, there are actually some developers in Hawaii who want to build affordable units for local families. And to incentivize them, instead of offering your typical one or two luxury tower deal that are hard to pencil in, let's work with local banks and lenders and figure out a way to bundle a whole bunch of residential and mixed use towers, a like wholesale in bulk Costco type of deal so that these developers know that they will have continuous work for years to come, that it will be volume over time versus just your quick luxury condo for a quick profit. I see this resulting in long-term jobs for local construction, but more importantly, it will generate hope in locals. When I purchased my place in downtown, I had to wait a few years for it to be built. So while I couldn't move in right away, I felt so encouraged as I drove into work and I saw that project being built. I'd occasionally walk by the building and I could see it getting taller after each month until eventually I moved in. Now imagine, as a local, driving by the rail stations on the freeway and you see the towers coming up knowing that one day you'll be able to move in. I think it'd feel pretty great. And yes, rail will provide transportation through certain parts of the island, but more importantly, if we think about rail in terms of the housing it will provide, it will help solve Hawaii's most immediate issue. And that $12.6 billion price tag won't look so bad, right? Now to oversee the development, we should create community development districts around the rail stations and allow the Hawaii Community Development Authority to oversee the process. And the Hawaii Community Development Authority already oversaw Kaka'ako. And while luxury towers were allowed under their watch, I say let's give them a second chance by 
giving them strict requirements for residential towers and the public has to keep an eye on what's going on because there's going to be that temptation right to try to maximize profits on residential development near the rail stations but we have to quelch that urge and know that it's for the betterment of the state to not build those luxury towers. No luxury towers with promises to build some affordable units at a different location or time. No cash in lieu deals. These units are to be built for the purpose of essential shelter, not speculative investment. And how will the state help fund this? I don't know where the funds are going to come from in the future to support this type of project, but I do know the state is currently sitting on about $1 billion in surplus cash and I say we start there. And I'm not saying that we use all of that for housing, but if housing is truly our biggest issue as a state, we're gonna have to commit some significant amount of funding to this, not just for a couple of fiscal years. I mean, it's probably gonna take a decade or more, but imagine all of the local people we can retain if housing is available for them. Because without those local people, Hawaii changes. We need to fix the education system in Hawaii, particularly the public education in Hawaii. I feel like it's gotten so bad that parents are at the point of desperation to do anything to get their kid out of public school and into a private school. It's kind of hard to have a quality education system when over half the teachers in Hawaii don't make it past their fifth year in the profession. And while we continue to invest in paid differentials for teachers in hard to fill positions, I think we need to focus on finding other ways to keep our teachers teachers. I think back to all of the best teachers I had in public school. Most of them were older and had been teaching for years. They had a strong foundation in education and were clearly committed to teaching. So to me, the best way to get better teachers is to make sure that they stay teachers for a long time. So. Let's provide our teachers with a housing stipend to help with their mortgage or rent. Maybe $500 per month per teacher would be a nice benefit for teaching our keiki. It's not a lot, but it's something. I have a feeling the general consensus is that education is important and the keiki are our future. Yet when it comes time to talk about ways to help teachers, everyone gets real tight and says that we can't afford it because it's going to cost too much. Let's look at the numbers first and figure out what we can do. So with 13,700 teachers in Hawaii and $500 stipends per teacher, am I really suggesting that the state give out $6.8 million per month to teachers? Well, yes. First of all, this incentive, while generous, would come with some strings attached. It's primarily aimed at teachers that commit to teaching for at least five years since that seems to be the drop-off point for half the teachers. Teachers who have taught over five years would automatically be eligible for the housing assistance, and those who are working toward the five years could still receive a stipend on a probationary status, whereby if they fail to work for the required five years, then they would have to pay back the money that was given to them. I think that's pretty fair. Also, since teachers are on a 10-month contract, I think it would be fair to provide 10 months worth of housing assistance to be consistent with the contract, bringing the total amount of teaching housing assistance per year to $68.5 million. But let's just say we're being real generous because let's face it, teachers gotta pay their rent all 12 months. So let's provide 12 months of support, bringing the total to $82 million per year. Now I know that's a lot of money and I'm not a state budget expert and I don't know the complexities of all the inner workings of how the budget works. However, I know where the state has at least an extra $103 million a year. You see, this past year, the state decided to take what was previously the county's transient accommodations tax revenues or the hotel tax, a nice allocation of about $103 million per year. And in my eyes, this is all extra money since the state has never had access to it until now. Why not commit some of it to help improving our education system by improving the lives of our teachers? And the best part, it's not an increase in taxes for locals, but rather funds that are coming from tourists. Doesn't that sound nice? Tourists pay to help our teachers be able to afford living in Hawaii. I mean, the headline basically writes itself. Okay, I need a water break. Tourism, the economic juggernaut that funds most of what goes on in this state. And for a long time, it seemed unstoppable until 2020, when we realized that it's very vulnerable. There have been talks about diversifying the economy in Hawaii since the pandemic, but let's face it, 
there were way too many distractions going on and I really don't see much difference now versus before in terms of diversification. Tourism is too easy and comfortable for us. So how do we start thinking differently about diversifying Hawaii's economy? I think we can do it through two things, tech and agriculture. I know there's been this push to try and attract big tech or even mid-sized tech to Hawaii. We figured that's the only way locals can get high paying tech jobs. Sorry, but tech and IT companies aren't moving here. We can try to entice them with incentives and tax credits, but with California and Washington so much better situated, why would they move here? Even the local startups in tech that we assist through accelerators end up packing and moving to the West Coast and who can blame them? So instead of trying to attract tech companies to move to Hawaii, I think we should be investing in education pathways that would allow locals to work remotely for some of these companies. Hawaii has some intelligent, talented, and capable people. And instead of losing them to the mainland because of the jobs, let's try to keep them here by assisting them in finding jobs that would allow them to stay in Hawaii. Okay, first, we need to improve the remote work situation in Hawaii. Honolulu ranks second to the last in the best cities to work remotely, or to put it another way, Honolulu is the second worst city to work remotely, which is quite embarrassing. What that means is upgrades in the broadband infrastructure. Second and more importantly, Let's start reaching out to some of our local contacts on the mainland and see if we could establish a workforce pipeline that connects local people with remote work at mainland companies. And I'm sure that there are some local people at some of these tech companies who would at least be intrigued by the idea of helping out other locals. And this workforce pipeline would of course help the University of Hawaii graduates who pursued higher education in the state, but it would be so valuable to those local kids who go to the mainland schools and they don't know where to go after graduation. And instead of opting to stay on the mainland, these kids can now be drawn back to Hawaii, not out of a sense of nothing better to do, but because they have a job lined up back home for a mainland company, especially one that's in their field. And along with bringing remote tech jobs to Hawaii, I think the second way we could think differently about expanding our economy is through agriculture. I'm not talking about going back to sugarcane and pineapple picking days, you know. I'm sure just mentioning Dole Cannery brings flashbacks for some people who spent summers working at the cannery. Hawaii currently depends on importing most of its food, nearly 90% of it. And this affects the quality of the food, but also the prices. Let's try to find ways to expand our agriculture capabilities by using the technology that is out there. And rather than thinking about the future of agriculture in terms of your traditional farms, why not pursue vertical farming with hydroponics? These farms will be limited to the outskirts of the urban core, but could be incorporated in densely populated areas. These farms could produce a higher yield since the crops are grown in a more controlled environment and energy costs for the lights could be offset by solar panels. And these farms would utilize technology and growing techniques that could qualify for higher paying jobs. I mean, imagine high-tech ag jobs in Hawaii. Because I can't think of any other way for the state to reach its goal of growing 30% of our food by 2030, unless we all stop eating rice. And I don't know about you, but I can't give up my rice. Hawaii is where I'm from and where I live, and I like to keep it that way. But I'm afraid that if we don't start thinking differently in addressing our issues, Hawaii will just be a place where I'm from and not a place where I live. And when I say not a place where I live, I'm not just speaking literally, but also figuratively because if you're struggling so much to just barely make it each month in Hawaii, is that really living in Hawaii or merely surviving? You know, it's really easy to point out the problems in Hawaii. If you walk around and talk story with the uncles cruising under the shade, they'll tell you what's wrong with Hawaii very loudly. But very few could probably provide any substantial solutions to fix the problems. And frankly, that's not their job. That's up to our elected leaders. That's why we vote for them. More than anything, I think we need to start changing the way we solve our problems. Thinking differently takes courage and sometimes people won't understand some choices until many years later. And while it's tempting to look for quick fixes and band-aid solutions, it's gonna take real long-term thinking that will transcend administrations and elected officials' terms. In fact, addressing these issues this way will result in no one person really getting any of the credit. But I think that's okay because it's not about us and who gets the credit. It's for the keiki and the future of this wonderful place that we call home. So let me know what you think in the comments below. 
Thanks for watching and aloha.